Holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you. Jesus, we give you praise for the planet Earth. We give you praise for the peoples of the Earth. We give you praise for the churches. We give you praise for the health workers, the doctors and nurses that are at the forefront of the battle in the nations of the world against the coronavirus, Father God. We pray your protection upon the weak, upon the vulnerable, upon those who, like in India, were just given four hours before they were told there was lockdown. We, get, we, we pray for those who are daily, daily laborers and they depend on daily sustenance for their food. We lift up all the church leaders. We lift up all the governmental leaders for wise decisions, for wise planning. We thank you for nations of the Western world that have the privilege of being able to build hospitals, Lord, with just a few weeks' notice, but we, we, we thank you for them, and we pray for uh, nations in Africa, in Asia, in third world parts, third world nations, that you would give them wisdom, you would give them, um, you would guide them, you would help them to plan, Father, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we rebuke fear. Wherever fear is trying to take advantage, we rebuke fear in Jesus' name. We rejoice, O oh God, that the UK Office of National Statistics said today that in, of all deaths, of all deaths uh, in March, 1% was due to COVID. 99% weren't due to COVID. So, Father God, we pray peace upon your people, peace upon the nations in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, as I bring this word for April and just a bit of uh, a word concerning COVID and, and all that. Now, I, I want to start by, in terms of um, removing fear, that um, what we're experiencing now is, is not the start of the plagues of the book of Revelation. It's not the start of the book of the plagues of Revelation. All right, are you with me? The, the, the plagues start, if you look in, in Revelation chapter 6, the, when the Revelation chapter 6, when, when the plagues start, they, they, they start with, um, with one world government, the conqueror coming into place. Um, from there, you have different famines, different uh, wars going on. It's the same with the blowing of the, with the opening of the seals. Uh, I'm sorry, I got that right. Opening of the seals is, is the first one, and then the trumpets and the bowls. So, you know, be, don't, don't be afraid, all right? We, we are fast approaching the time of um, the, the end days, but we are not quite there yet. Praise God. So, um, turn with me in your Bible, if you will, a well-known passage, Amos chapter 3, and uh, from verse 3, it says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest? when he has no prey. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he's caught nothing? Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth when there is no trap for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there's calamity in the city, will not the Lord have done it? Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Praise God. So uh, just um, a, a few words about the corona virus before I bring my word for um, April. But um, bless, we, we praise God. We praise God. We're, we're, we're still here. And again, our hearts go out to those who are suffering in different parts of the world. Um, do you have any testimony from the, the March word? You know, please, please do share testimonies from the word of March. Praise God. So we need to keep praying for, for governments, for good governance. We need to pre keep praying for the masses. We need to pray for opportunities for salvation, uh, opportunities to reach out. Um, a lot of uh, politicians and here in the UK, we use the term social distancing. 
And um, I, I heard on the news there's an option. Why don't we call it physical distancing? We don't want to be distancing ourselves socially from people, but it's a time for gathering of families and re reuniting with, with old friends, you know, over media, over different WhatsApp groups. So don't, don't distance yourself socially, you know, integrate more socially, but distance yourself physically. Now, um, some people say, you know, is this, is this evil of the Lord? The, the, the COVID-19 is, is not of the Lord. It's not of the Lord. Can the Lord use it? And why is the Lord using it? Oh, yes, the Lord is using it. The Lord is using it. But this evil is of the devil. He's trying to wreck lives and bring fear. He will not succeed in Jesus' name. He's trying to introduce uh, world government systems ahead of their time. He will not succeed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is God of the universe. No one can change or hurry his timing. This is not time for one world government. It's not time for all those other uh, scenarios. We haven't yet seen the outbreak of the great outpouring of the Spirit of God. It's not time. The Ancient of Days, though, will use this and is using this for his purposes. Now, there is coming a time when the plagues and the, 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 the disaster is coming upon the earth. There is coming a time when the church will be persecuted. Daniel in chapter 7, you know, spoke about this when the, the, the saints are given over to the beast. Revelation 13 7 speaks of uh, authority being given to the beast over the saints. We're, we're not we're not there yet We're not there yet, but it's good to be um, Aware of the times and know that we are approaching the end of the world as we know it So God is using COVID and he's using it to work out his purposes One he's shaking the nations. Haggai 2 speaks of the shaking of the nations He's leveling the playing field in parts of the world. He's calling the attention of man back to God in my home nation in Nigeria, you know, I was watching this clip the other day and uh, people were rejoicing because uh, those uh, politicians uh, who are corrupt, we have good ones, but we have corrupt ones too, who at the slightest sneeze, they, they, they travel to different parts of the world. They're not able to do that now. And so the, the attention is on them. Well, you need, to, you need to develop your own nation. And it's, I know it's not just Nigeria, it's the same in many third world nations. May God give us good and godly leaders. So God is working out his purposes. It's a time to watch and pray. We need to be aware of what season we're in. I love something that uh, a dear friend, uh, John Ayodele, he leads uh, the Nigeria Academy of Prophetic and Apostolic Reform, NAPA in Nigeria. He says the world is saying wash and be clean, but that's good. But we need to say, apart from just washing and being clean, we need to watch and be cleansed on the inside. So it's a time of inner purging and watching also, not as well as the washing, you know, obey the government and the health guidelines by all means. He says he's calling attention of humanity back to divinity in Jesus' name. The Lord is also purging and pruning his church. He's uh, in, in areas of the church where there has been a, a, an ungodly control over people. He's remo removing and breaking that control over his people. The people belong to God. As uh, church leaders, we only steward the people of God. We only shepherd the people of God. But they, they have one, one, one shepherd and one loyalty to Jesus. He is also pruning and unifying the prophetic. And it's a time when we need to watch out for false, or I prefer to say, you know, wrong or incomplete prophecies. There's nothing like G5. You know, there was a G5 that's, that, you know. And in weighing prophetic words, we need to mature as a people. And um, I'm thankful for my own covering, the Interprophetic Apostolic Alliance. We have a core team, and we have, uh, you know, Stuart Wentworth is there, Richard Mitchell is there, Sid Cordell is, is there, Mark Van Gundy is there, Elaine Paul is there, Yomi is there, and several of these people, they were in Christ before me, and I submit to them. And we need to be finding uh, places like uh, IPA, you know, who, who I serve as the convener, where we can weigh our prophetic words, where we can grow in the prophetic. But all around the world, we need to be weighing prophecy. Before you click forward, on that prophetic word, you know, weigh it. Uh, you, you know, you ask uh, the, the person who sent it if you need, you know, what's your accountability structure? But I want to just also say this in weighing prophetic words, and that there's so many words going out there that, that a word is weighed doesn't mean that that prophet is a false prophet. Are you with me? That the word isn't fully accurate doesn't mean there's a bad, they're a bad person. We need to, we need to watch that. Then, um, in terms of, of what we ought to do, uh, this is not necessarily, at least in the Western world, this is not a time to champion Hebrews 10.25. God, you, you know, don't forsake the assembling together of, of yourselves. You, you, you know, you could do that by media, but our allegiance needs to be to the government. 
social responsibility in this case is overtaking, at least in the world and Western world, social responsibility is overtaking the, 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 the need to meet together. And I, I understand that there are many who believe that, um, not, that, who believe that churches and fellowships ought to become healing centers at this time. Hey, God bless you if, if that's where you are. And I believe that there are those who are called to that, you know, by all, by all means, go ahead, go ahead with that. We've heard of, we hear the stories of John G. Lake in South Africa, you know, turn of the last century. You know, he would put his finger where there was bubonic plague and the plague would die out. Praise God. May God restore them. May God raise up healing centers in parts of the world where it is um, where where churches or gatherings are still uh, permitted however with a cap of people may God do that but you know we, we, we need to be careful and understand the seasons that we are at in uh, in in in, uh, in our book apostolic and prophetic fires one of the chapters deals with 30 transitions made in the church and we need to be careful that we are emphasizing what the Holy Spirit is emphasizing at this correct time there was a time, for instance, that it was correct to be separate from the world. But now we are meant to invade the seven mountains and infiltrate and bring change to the world. So there are different emphasis of the Holy Spirit. And now he's emphasizing social responsibility, at least in the western part of the world. Hallelujah. Now, um, from the beginning of January into February and March, there were several meetings that we organized asking the question, what ought Israel to do in line with 1 Chronicles 12.32, where the sons of Issachar, they understood the, the signs and the, the times and the seasons, and they were able to say this and this is what we're able to do, what we ought to do. And looking back, you know, uh, the Lord spoke, you know, and um, you know, and as, a, as a prophet, I'm getting to understand more that our lives, uh, if you're called to the prophetic, in the prophetic office, it's not just what you say, but it's your life that God uses. We see this in, in the Old Testament where they were told to do different things and their whole life was a prophecy. And Lord been speaking to me since January, he said it's a time of rest and recuperation from the last season, a time to prepare for a new season of activity, for a new outpouring of the Spirit, if you like, that is, com that is coming. But so there's, there's, there's a break from the old to the new. And that, that's what the Lord was speaking to me in January and in February. Then at the end of February, we had a meeting in Manchester and one in London, and we saw five things that the Lord was saying that in, in response to our prayer to him, Lord, as a prophetic gathering, tell us what should we be doing. We saw the Ark of the Covenant being brought into the church, the altar of self-sacrifice, as well as his presence being brought in. You, 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 you know, um, Elaine Paul, who, who was with us, she saw four angels bringing in. So God is saying, I'm restoring my presence and my glory to the church. But also along with it, the steward went, with says there also needs to be a new a new outpouring of the, the on the altar of self-sacrifice and then we saw God doing something at five categories of ministries we saw prophets being given the, the, the daggers their mouths were, and their words were becoming like daggers in the in the hand of the Lord we saw oil flowing copiously as people were granted grace to heal the sick many without even uttering a prayer they would begin to heal the sick we saw apostolic movements of uh, 5,000 was the number that the Lord gave us and this wasn't just church but it was like church planting movements apostolic movements of people and one man of God that was there you know we, we really sense that the power of God flowing in that way we release it father to whoever it's due in Jesus name we saw administrative grace being given to found movements um, a, a wonderful uh, American prophetess who was with us she, Sheila Highwater she said she called it the scribal anointing that by the writing of your pen you are able to administer and birth new movements to bring great change and bring great solution to the planet in Jesus name then we also saw fresh mantles of responsibility coming on the saints because they saw a need and as an, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they moved in response to that need. And so as the Lord uses this period of quiet and this period of lockdown, allow the anointings of the Lord to filter in and upon you in Jesus name. And for Manchester, we've been seeing this for many years that God is going to raise in Manchester an apostolic and prophetic roundtable that will be a, a role model for the 
rest of Europe, for the, uh, for, for the rest of Europe and be able to impact the rest of the world. So the coronavirus is, be, is, is something of the devil, but God is using it as an incubation period for many of these things to take place. This is the gestation period for all the things that I've just mentioned. So personally, I saw a big red button and God pressing it, and it was the reset button for different uh, computers and instruments and gadgets. You sometimes press the button to return to factory settings. And I saw that it's a time of recalibration and reconsolidation of godly visions. I saw that it's an incubation period to birth the promises of God. And I saw many marriages. I saw many courtships going on even in this period, long distance, long hour phone calls in Jesus' name. So God is pressing the reset button and he's recalibrating the world and the body of Christ. It's a time of changing of positions, of renewing of strategies. Um, Rachel Wilson in Spain had this word and I, I got glimpses of it also because the Lord had been speaking about a shaking of the nations that the wealth would be restored back to the church. And what I saw and we'll still do this um, once, once borders begin to open, was that there would be an apostolic team that we should take from Rome. We've been to Rome seven times on different prophetic assignments and take and, and go from Rome to Jerusalem and speak for a restoration of the glory of church back to the true apostolic church and she saw also that as of this shaking um, those you, we would we would we would see this this word of God come to pass that he that had little had no lack but he that gathered much had nothing left over. So God is shaking things and he's releveling things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I've, I've spoken already about the church being, pur being purged. What should we do in response to this lockdown? And um, Mark Van Gundy, part of our core team, he, 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 he said this, that Paul regarded himself as the prisoner of the Lord, not the prisoner of Rome, as the prisoner of the Lord. So see yourself as the prisoner of the Lord. What should you do? Walk in reverence and fear. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring readjustments to every paradigm that you have had before. Um, Stuart again and again spoke about Isaiah chapter 26. Adjust your theological balance. We believe in the goodness of God, but we must balance it with the everlasting gospel preached in Revelation chapter is, uh, Revelation 13 or 14. So this is the everlasting God. Fear God. And this is the everlasting gospel. Fear God give him glory fear god give him glory worship him the creator of all things those four things those must be central in our preaching and communication of the gospel when 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 people come to christ and revivals come out of the the shakings of god and the fear of god there's always a depth that people who just come because of the love and the niceties of god do not always have glory to God. So we see that this out of this time of shaking, out of this time of stillness, there's going to come a move of the Spirit of God and a breaking of the Spirit of God. There's going to come an acceleration of things of the Spirit. Just as the coronavirus was able to, was able to go and effect, uh, affect and shut down so many nations. Hey, when the Spirit of God comes, hallelujah, how glorious that will be. It's a time of rest and restoration and erection of altars, restoration of altars, altars, meeting places in your home, in your garden, in d at different places in your house, in your compound, where you connect and you communicate with God. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. I referred to this earlier. I'll just mention it again. Revelation 6, 17 speaks of the great day of his wrath has come. This is not that yet. This is not that yet. So don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We're not yet in, in, that, in that season of time. Glory to God. So, what did the Lord show me for April? He showed me, first of all, an egg. The egg speaks of a period of incubation. And the Lord's word, the angel's words to Mary were, Do not fear, for that which is in you is of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will come upon you, overshadow you, and the thing inside of you shall be caught. So there is coming, it is a birthing period, we are, we are the prisoners of the Lord, and it is a birthing period, but you know, you spend time in his presence, churn up the fervor, churn up the fervor and the zeal of God, warm up the, 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 the belly and the giftings of God in your spirit man, warm up your belly, and let those babies hatch out, be born of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. And also, I, w I saw a fish, and... Uh, the fish was waiting to be caught and it was flying and I saw that the Lord was releasing nets 
instrument to be able to catch the fish and bring the fish in. I saw, I, I was reminded of the Lord's word, follow me and I will make you fishes of men. So Father God, we pray for ingenious methods and tools to be able to catch the fish in the name of Jesus. We thank you for historically, Father, how you release insight, how you release them. I remember back in, back in, back in Nigeria, we had this thing back in the 70s. It was a motiri, I have found it. And it led to the salvation of many. So we, the, we hear the four spiritual laws. We hear the Roman road. These are all uh, techniques and tools used to harvest, to harvest um, uh, the, the, the fish. So Father God, thank you for strategic relationships and for strategic downloads of tools to harvest the fish in jesus name then in march i saw one of the things that i saw was a cat prowling and it was going stealthily about to catch about to cause harm and the lord showed me again about that and i want to encourage you be sensitive to any discomfort or unease or dispeace inside of you about any particular plan project or relationship you have the holy ghost you don't have to wait for the the plan of the evil one to hatch in the name of Jesus you don't have to wait for that but you can tune in particularly in these times of quiet tune in and pick up that voice of discomfort that bit of unease and where you find that put things on hold in Jesus name and then again uh, in a, 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 a again a similar call for discernment there was this dog barking as I heard the dog barking this is the revelation that I got I, I, it suddenly struck me when a dog is barking like that it could mean danger it could mean fear or it could mean the dog has found what you are looking for so father God pray for, I pray for a gift and a grace of interpretation father God of the sounds that will come so many sounds are going to be coming in April but we need discernment to understand what actually is being said in that sound in Jesus name so hallelujah I spoke earlier it's not a time of social distancing as much as physical distancing take this time to love and appreciate your family your close circle of friends around you in Jesus name if you're looking for for greater sense of accountability in the prophetic you know drop me an email God's oyster aol.com send me an email and, and get in touch uh, you know the Interprophetic Apostolic Alliance in here in the UK and the Western world. There's about 50 of us uh, affirmed prophets, apostles, uh, prophetic ministers, uh, prophetic intercessors. We also have a team in Nigeria, but we are a family that w relate together. Out of the relationship comes accountability, and we trust God to use us to be a voice. Glory to God. Father God, thank you so much for your saints that have tuned in today. Your blessing, your shalom, your peace upon them, wisdom, guidance. Lord, I pray for those who are suffering financially, economically, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, who are having a loss of earnings, a loss of income. I pray, Father God, your divine provision upon them. Lord, I pray for good health for all that are listening in the name of Jesus, that they won't need to go to hospitals or clinics, particularly at this time. Sustain them with good health in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thanks again for listening. Have a great month of April. Glory to God. Lord, thank you for the younger generation. Do enjoy this word from my son, Prince, in Courchevel in France. God bless you. Bye. Hello. Happy New Daylight Saving Summertime. Happy April. It will be the best time, the best April, the best month ever so far. Amen. So what I was getting is, you know, the clocks have gone forward an hour, and what Holy Spirit was showing me is that um, the clocks have gone forward, but there are some of us. Some of us we have some catching up to do. So, you know, earlier on in the year or last year, we may have set some goals. We may have, you know, put our mind to achieve some things, set some goals, and um, you know, we haven't yet done them we're not yet there and so like this period this time is like it's the perfect opportunity it's a god-given opportunity for us to catch up and work on those things that we wanted to achieve and so i was seeing you know i watched the time jump forward it was like in a second you know it was 2 a.m so it was 1 uh, 59 and then it turned to 2 and then boom it was 3 you know and so i saw just god there's the grace of God is there, so for us in this period, if we really commit to it and commit what we want to achieve unto God by His grace and through our commitment and committing this to Him, just in that, like in that second, 
the time jumped forward an hour i saw like the acceleration god will take us to where we would have been if we would never stopped doing what we wanted to do so you know like we all have our own excuses we can call it the busyness of life that got in the way and it's like a second chance god he wants the best for us and he wants us to be you know uh he doesn't place a desire on your heart if it's not his will to give it to you and so there are some desires that are god ordained desires that have been placed on our heart hearts to better us and you know to make us more equipped and god wants us to have those abilities those skills to be the best he wants you know so um yeah